Little Marilyn All here with some more dirndl ideas. Actually, today it's a focus on blouses, not dirndls necessarily. I'm just going to go through a lot of my different variety of blouses, and it's interesting how you could take one pattern and what you do with the sleeves and the different trims, what you do with the neckline can totally change the look of the blouse. So sometimes you just you just want some help coming up with new ideas. So today is the video for you with lots of blouse ideas. One of my favorite blouse patterns is the one I'm wearing right now. It's really versatile. The neckline goes square. And there's elastic here, um, eyelet trim around the neckline, and eyelet trim on the sleeves. I'll show you a couple of different uh, options for the sleeves. I think that a, the sleeves can really be a nice feature on your, in your blouse. I have a couple blouses that have see-through sheer sleeves. The one thing you don't want to have is a fabric that's especially all the way through the trunk of your body that is a non-breathable fabric like a, a heavy rayon or polyester. Some of those, if you're, especially if you're going to be outside a lot, will really make you hot and sweaty and there's, no way, there's nowhere for the moisture to go. And especially if you have a dress that has lining and interfacing and then you have your blouse too, you can get really warm. A lot of these dirndl blouses also are crop tops. They only go to about here as opposed to a blouse that goes really long and that you tuck in. So I'll show you a couple different blouses that have different necklines and different sleeve finishes at the bottom and different sleeves finishes on the top. I think the, the shorter sleeves are really youthful looking, especially the ones that are kind of a little cap sleeve. Ones with buttons are nice, but if you're changing clothes and you're kind of in a hurry, you might have to like take a few minutes to, to fiddle with the buttons. So a blouse like this, is really nice. You just pop it over your head and you're good to go. Another feature this one has, which I'll show a close up to later, there's a little drawstring right here that if you want cleavage to show, you can pull on the little drawstring and you'll kind of have a nice little sweetheart, little neckline thing. That's not for old ladies. That's definitely for younger people who don't mind showing off their, their business. I don't like to show off my business. Delicate lace along the neckline <laughs> looks so sweet on this girl's blouse and it has set in sleeves with gathered elastic. It's the small details like this that really pretty up this blouse. This particular blouse does not have any elastic, but it has a self-fabric drawstring. This one is so amazing. You can put it on quite a few different sizes of people. And as you draw the drawstring up, you can choose even yourself if you're wearing it, whether you want to have it be lower or higher. And when you tie the little drawstrings, you can choose to have the, the tie show, or you can tuck them in to the blouse through the little v-neck here. After folding and ironing the bottom two inches of these sleeves under, two rows of stitching created a casing for the elastic. The result is a soft and feminine ruffle. This particular blouse is my mom's. We have some really beautiful wedding trim in the neckline here. So it's again a square neck. And so instead of having lace going up the sides, we had it just going across the front. It's gathered and then the waist is also gathered or the empire. Mom has some of that same wedding lace trimming out the bottom of the sleeves. And to tighten the sleeves, we have a very tiny delicate ribbon that goes into this little tiny casing that, that came as part of the beautiful wedding trim. She can gather the sleeve as tight or loose as she wants. So this one has a, a plain set in sleeve that's not very wide, not very puffy. A lot of my blouses are made with raglan sleeves, which means the sleeve goes all the way up to the neckline right here and it's, it's not a set in sleeve. This one also has a self-ruffled neckline. The neckline goes up, you fold it over, and it makes its own casing for the elastic around the neckline. A little tip I have, a lot of times when I make a specific dress with a specific blouse, I'll take a little bit of trim or fabric and use it to make a label in the back so when I'm washing a lot of blouses together, I don't think afterwards, uh oh, which one did that go to? So this little trip here matches the ribbon trim on the front of the dress. The front of this blouse has some vintage lace that I sewed onto the flat fabric before I made the blouse. And it has the neckline finished off with by a strip that I created from a piece of this fabric. This is a real fine, uh, sheer, lightweight fabric, really beautiful. And this is a little bit see-through, but not too much. These sleeves are set in sleeves, not too terribly full, with a little bit of that same trim along the, the sleeves. And so then this one also has a crop top, which is real typical of the German dirndl blouses. 
This is a crop top, and this one, instead of having a delicate um, little quarter inch or half inch ruffle, this one has a good one and a half inch ruffle made of, the, of its own fabric, and it kind of starts over here and then it goes a little bit gradually wider. This one has a drawstring in the front here, and when you pull on the drawstring, it pulls down and it would kind of cove around your breast and make um, a little more cleavage show. You have the elastic a good two inches up from the bottom, and then the edge of the uh, fabric is just turned under to make a nice little ruffle. Now this is a woman's dress, so the sleeve in this case is more than a foot long, and it has really beautiful open work eyelet, and the elastic is a good two and a half inches up on the arm. And this same fabric then would be all over in the bodice. As you can see here, little holes here, and this is just a scoop neckline with double fold bias tape used to finish off. So this is a set-in sleeve too. This is one of my favorite blouses. It's very delicate. This is just plain cotton. However, there's some open work here just on either side of the front facing. Five silver buttons, elastic at the bottom. Set-in sleeves with that same trim again. And I finished off the neckline with double fold bias tape. Nice scoop neckline. It's a very clean crisp look. Again, this kind of a set-in sleeve that is not too full and flouncy, that's, that's got a really youthful look. And it's a little bit shorter sleeves there, only about three or four inches long. And This is a very delicate blouse. It has see-through lace. It's kind of organza along the neckline. It has see-through sleeves, puffed, and then there's a ribbon that's sewn on there with the same trim on the bottom of the sleeves. Very pretty and very feminine. One thing I really like about this particular blouse, it has very delicate, kind of like a netting with very shiny embroidery over it. So I made a little ruffle out of this fabric using my serger to finish off the neckline. The sleeves are the same shimmery embroidery on netting. And the way the sleeves gather is I sewed a little casing on there that's an eyelet casing. It has a little opening, I don't know what it's called, and then there's a white drawstring. The first thing that really pops out on this blouse is the fact that it's made out of satin. And it has a ruffle that starts very gradually and then it tapers up bigger and bigger around the neckline. This has one of those square necklines with the little drawstring pulls for cleavage. Um, elastic around the bust line for the bottom. But another really nice thing is it has an inset of beautiful wedding lace that comes down all the way to the bottom. And then the uh, satin, it makes its own ruffle that kind of matches enough ruffle on the neckline. It's really beautiful. I found this at Goodwill and I thought it was very, very cute. Big eyelet that looks like daisies and that's open work on the sleeves. And then it went over they did an overlay over the front of the blouse with this same cute, cute eyelet lace. The back of the blouse is just plain. It's pretty much a little stretchy t-shirt with this adorable lace. Now that looks so sharp. I think one important thing to remember when you're making a blouse for a child or an adult is to keep the proportions right. This one has a little child size neckline so the the little bit of eyelet I have showing is about a half an inch. If you were to make a you know large dress or dress maybe for someone who's size 18 or 20 you might want to consider having this eyelet be a lot bigger like maybe even up to two inches and, and right now it's kind of popular to have blouses that the neckline coves around the back higher up. You could do that too. A friend, a friend of mine gave me some satin sheets so this is an off-white sheet and I made a little ruffle that came up the neckline and kind of tapered out to about one inch thick and it has that same drawstring front for cleavage and I have an inset that I put in here, an off-white inset from a curtain and I have matching apron that goes with this but it makes for a real nice finish. Now I could have made it a little more fancy by taking this same fabric and making a ruffle along the bottom, but in this case I finished it with this inset from the curtain and I added a little eyelet on the side of it. I found some kitchen curtains at Value Village and I made a blouse and an apron to match. However, it needed to be whitened, so I used a whitening product on it and it made all of the embroidery 
changed to kind of a burnt umber color. So I went ahead and I sewed some red sequins over each of those because I just hated to kiss this blouse goodbye. I didn't have anything to match that that um, other color. So it, it really it sparkles and it's beautiful from a distance. This is an example of one of my favorite styles of blouses. The first is I had some netting with embroidered flowers on it and it had its own border built in. Instead of ruining the look by putting a casing all the way around to put elastic to tighten it, I sewed two ends of ribbons and then I tie a little bow before I put it on and make it how tight I think I would like it or I have my husband do it after I put the dress on. It has a set in sleeve with a little bit of gathering up here so it's not overly a full sleeve. I took this same fabric and I uh, overlaid it over some cotton and then I made this blouse with a scoop neck and double fold bias tape at the edges just gentle gathering. This square neck girls blouse has eyelet trim around the neck opening and the same trim on the center of each sleeve. Like many German blouses it's a crop top with elastic at the bottom. It's the small details like this that really pretty up this blouse. So the sleeves have the little satin ribbon and as I turn the mannequin around you can see that it kind of coves in really nicely. That's one thing I like about this pattern and the thing that's very different about it is normally you would not have the bias tape showing on the outside but I used satin and I wanted it to show. I also have satin here and again normally this would be kind of facing that would go on the inside. I have the satin showing on the outside. Normally elastic casing would be on the inside but I thought that it's nice to repeat that satin again that I had on the bodice. This is a set in sleeve square neckline with elastic a crop top. For my final blouse I have the creme de la creme. This blouse has heart trim on the round gathered neckline and amazing open work inset into the sleeves with the heart trim on either side. To cap it all off, this large heart trim is gently gathered around the lower edge of the sleeves. I love this blouse. If you like these virtual blouse tours, please give this video a thumbs up and leave questions or comments in the comment section below.